Hello everyone and welcome to Lucky Loaders 15 and I'm glad to be back on the YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to be covering the action at France tomorrow with two videos. One which is this one which you're watching which contains my Each Way Lucky 15 tips from Paris Longchamp and the other one will be on the jumps card at Compiègne which is also a good card there. They've got some uh, graded action, they've got some listed races so it'll be interesting to see um, that card down there um, and hopefully we can have some winners. But I just want to apologise for not being on this YouTube channel of late. We haven't really been going in the last uh, few weeks obviously due to the coronavirus, um, haven't had too much racing to get stuck into. We did do some content in America, we've had some uh, racing in South Africa to get our teeth into which we were doing quite well at uh, before it got cancelled over there due to the coronavirus lockdown. Uh, we were having quite a few winners over there and that's where our profits were mainly coming from on this YouTube channel. We've dabbled a little bit in Hong Kong and also as well Australia but it's good to be back in calmer waters. But away from YouTube I've been uh, running my podcast in the saddle. I um, do it with my friend who works for Better Fair and Paddy Power, Mark Kurowski, and uh, we're really looking to uh, take this podcast forward. We've had some terrific guests in April. I interviewed the likes of John Joe O'Neill Jr., conditional champion jockey, spoke to Lee Mottishead from the Racing Post. We've also as well spoken to Fran Altoft, who's a racing photographer. We like to interview uh, different people from across the industry. We've even gone abroad. We spoke to Acacia Courtney, who works at Gulfstream. She works on uh, the broadcasting company there, and she was really good to talk to. We did an intro uh, to US racing. I spoke to Kirsten Duke, where we did an intro for Australian racing. I spoke to Ulrika Holmquist, who's one of the top jockeys in Sweden, and she's ridden outside of Sweden as well. She's ridden New Zealand. She's ridden all around the world and won some top races um, across the globe so she was really interesting to interview and we even had the likes of Tyler Gaffleone um, earlier in the week who's uh, got ambitions to potentially um, win some races at the Breeders' Cup. He won the Preakness Stakes last year um, he did with War of Will for Mark Cass, which is one of the US Triple Crown races, and he's definitely an upcoming star in the United States, and it was really interesting talking to him. And We've got some great guests lined up and good content moving forward, and if you want to listen to that podcast, uh, we're now available on Apple or iTunes, uh, we're available on Spotify, SoundCloud, Podbean, I'll leave the links um, in the description below, and if you can go over there, give us a follow, give us a review, all your feedback is well, really appreciated, so hopefully um, you can go and check that out, and uh, hopefully you'll be interested to listen uh, to some of those podcasts, but we'll get straight into the tipping end of things now, and we're going to be starting in the opening uh, race at uh, Paris Longchamp tomorrow in the 9.55, the Prix saint de Georges awful french pronunciation there uh, it's a group three contest a sprinting race and i thought gold vibe could be the way to play here for pascal barry and christian de muro round about a four to one shot at the moment and he brings some of the best form on offer really he finished sixth in the abbey last year behind glass slippers and they had form tied in before that when he finished third uh in the trial for that race but um, I think the ground conditions were against him that day. It was soft and a lot of his best form has come on a decent surface. The ground tomorrow is actually good to soft. So that shouldn't be too bad for him. And he's a speedier type as well. And this is over a trip that's shorter than five furlongs. And I think that's going to suit him tomorrow. A lot of these horses that are in the race, they're upcoming. They're probably better over six and seven furlongs. And I just wonder maybe they might get outpaced against a horse like Gold Vibe. Actually, Gold Vibe's got some really good form going back earlier through his career. He finished second to Mabs Cross, who's a dual Group 1 winner and uh, and is a very was a very good yardstick until I think she's now retired. But yeah, he finished second to her in the Abbey in 2018 and he's one of the best horses in the race. And if he can come back to something like his old form tomorrow, I think he's got a good chance. You can get him around about 4-1 to in places. And if you're doing the each way lucky 50, I think that that is not a bad uh, bet to get us underway. We then go to the Prix de Fontainebleau and the talking horse of uh, the weekend is, uh, or of Monday I should say, is uh, Victor Le Durham, uh, the Godolphin horse for Andre Fab. Now I'm going to be taking him on here. I think he might just need the run, and I think he he was handed the race on the plate last time out. The horse that um, that I I like for this race and met him last time out is a horse called Helter Skelter, uh, which is trained by Jean Claude Rouget and Christian De Muro is actually booked for this ride. Now Helter Skelter uh, came from another parish, was given a very peculiar ride, and was definitely the one to take out of the race. Was staying on really strongly in the Jean Luc. 
Le Lagarde, oh, I can't pronounce it, awful French pronunciation, uh, but hopefully this can go well. It's around about 5-1 to one with bookmakers at the moment, and if you actually go back through its form, it got some good form tied in from its uh, listed win at uh, Deauville, and at 5-1 to one, if the favourite doesn't turn up, I thought that that wasn't a bad selection to get to be getting stuck into with to be honest with you, I think that's a good um, price there, what we call uh, the dirty each way bet, and hopefully that horse can come in. Now with our third le leg we go in the 12.25, the Prix de la Grotte, another Group 3 contest, and I'm going with a horse here called Kezaran uh, for Freddie Head and Orlean Lamatra. Now this horse is a daughter of King Run, and if you actually look on the dam side, she's a, out of a Dubawi mare, so uh, she's got an impressive uh, breeding, and she's in the personal colours of Sheikh Mohammed Al Maktoum tomorrow. Now this horse won a conditions race at Chantilly, Chantilly last time out, in really impressive style, and I think um, the further this horse goes up in trip, the better. She looks a very very classy individual and even though this is a stepping up in grade you can get around about two to one in places I think she's the one that's on the upward curve and I would be against the the main favorite for the race even though she does have good form as a two-year-old I would just like to maybe take her on with this horse that looks really impressive and could be going places now the other horse uh, for our final leg I think is a little bit outside of here in the pre de Arcor Group 3. Now, I know Sotas is going to be favourite with a lot of people. Obviously, his arc run last year is the best form on offer. But I'm just wondering over a trip, over a mile and two, this might be on the short side for him. And he wants maybe a bit more of a stamina test. So that's why I'm going to take a chance on Simona here, who's been running really well for Francois Henri, Henri Graffard, which is around about 11 1 at the moment. And they've booked Christophe Sumi on tomorrow, which is an interesting jockey booking. She won the Prix de Expri at Saint Cloud last time out from the front. And before that, she won at Compiègne over slightly shorter from the front. And I just think if they get into a handy position tomorrow, Sumi might be able to dictate the race. And if there is. Um, if there is, is a lack of pace in the race, she'll probably get her own way. And I think um, that tactic could suit her well tomorrow in this race. And at a double figure price, I think she's a good um, each way bet to have in a multiple bet like this. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if she won. Um, but for me, I think Sotas, he's too short on the bet and should be short, uh, shouldn't be shorter than even money, in my opinion. I think he should be possibly more of a six to four chance. Obviously, I respect him with his connections and the form he does bring to the table. But for me, I think he's too short. But hopefully, uh, my French knowledge from my my work at Sky Sport Racing can pay off tomorrow and hopefully we can have some winners so if you haven't done so already please subscribe to my YouTube channel here at Lucky Loaders 15 also as well make sure to go and check out my podcast of In The Saddle if you haven't done so already please gamble responsibly and we'll be seeing you soon